this episode 21 or 2 or 7? Okay. Uh, Headset. 21. Episode 21. Ron Ortiz. The big man. Boom. The best dude in CrossFit, actually. Yeah. Just pull the thing down. <laughs> and the, wait, wait, and wait, the wait. oldest guy in CrossFit, <laughs> too. Uh, yeah. You're, I pull it now? You're good. He's no, not actually good. the oldest guy. No, I know, but pretty old. Yeah. I'm getting there. Does it pull? Or? Yeah, no, I think you're good. Like Ron, how many times you been to Cookville? I was like, what? It's got to be seven or eight, nine. Yeah, now. something like that. Ron's part of the family now. Are we Love good, Trey? Trey? Trey looks. Okay, yeah. Can you? You talk? I can talk. All right, good. We're good. <coughs> We're good. Ready? Still got blood in my lungs, though. It tastes <laughs> What did you just, do? He was just swabbing his lungs with a Q-tip. That's what if I heard. I, if it would have worked, I would have done it. That's what it that way. I do believe I heard you say you wanted to put some Vaseline on your lungs. Yes, I would have <laughs> done that also. I don't really know how the uh, procedure for that. It's kind of heart wrenching because these guys do the workout and they walk around like no problem, and I'm like, it's cold breathing. though. It's cold. That's what it is. Yeah, Has you're to used to it's what 80 degrees in yeah, Florida like right now. 100 percent humidity. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and it snowed this morning. Yeah, it was 77 degrees last week, something like so that. Nice. So nice. And now That's it's perfect all of a sudden yeah. what happened? Winter came back. Like the trees were budding. Yeah. Now everything's gonna die. Hopefully, it brought out some of the bugs and killed those. Though. I actually saw that on the way in from the airport. All the, the what kind of trees are? Oh, uh, what are those? Bradford anyway. pears? I think. Yeah, I don't know. Bradford pears. I don't know nothing about white Tennessee trees. White. Well, I think they're. Nice. I think they're Bradford gorgeous. pears. Not palm. They trees. stink. Yeah, they, they smell stink. terrible. Bradford really? pears smell terrible. Yeah. I think we should just Maybe. clarify that Ron's a good hugger. He's on my hug uh-huh. side. But we established Ron is a good hugger because he knows how to hug. You do this weird, aggressive <laughs> forklift hug. <laughs> the forklift. The forklift. Like That's an alien. Right. The alien thing. Yeah. She's like this. Yeah, she's, yeah. Like we went through this this morning when we got here. Like she starts this like awkward, <laughs> creepy hug. And then she's the like, hips I'm not go creepy. In. Then the hips You're fall in creepy. first, and then the body comes in. It's but all I, I did. And learn. you had a man bun this morning. I didn't have a man bun. Did you see it? When she was running, it I couldn't she, tell because your hips were hitting my leg. <laughs> <laughs> very awkward. We had this whole thing on the last podcast. We talked about hugging. Yeah. And yeah. when I came in the door today, there was Ron, and he was rolling out. Yeah. And <laughs> I said, "What's up?" And we shook hands. And then he got up and he said, "Let's do this right." He gave me a big old hug. That's but Ron's, Ron's was, a hugger. It was very masculine, though. Yeah. Masculine hug. Yeah. I try to do that. Masculine's yeah. important. I just Except didn't realize that one hugging, goes here and one that. goes here. That's I was I was. Yeah, you wrong. do the... I, I didn't get that part. What do you mean? I you do know. The, I, you I know, but this. you do that awkward, like... <laughs> and you even make that goofy <laughs> face. <laughs> Dre, I am I right? Not. Am I right? Is there an emoji with that face? I think there is. Just like their eyes go. Just have a forklift and some creepy, like... Actually, there just needs to be an Ellie emoji. Ellie emoji. We need Why to not? ask Apple for that. We, yesterday, what, Kim Kardashian came out with her own emojis she or did? something like that? <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. We could have an Ellie emoji. About that. I saw it on a, a Twitter what? news. An Ellie emoji. Oh. I would like that. Well, I also we learned, though, that, that you're supposed to hug for 20 seconds. I don't seconds. really know what that is. Though. What? Whoa, that gets that's creepy. Uh, that's a creepy right we call there. that something else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would be called that's like creeper. Second, that's like second base. That's definitely second base. That's second base. Maybe even third. You're like... Whatever. Then you're there's gotta, be some you're trying to stretch a double into a triple <laughs> right there. <laughs> so what if you hug for 20 seconds and keep eye contact for seven? <laughs> of the, you of know the it's not. Okay, or Ron. So she says, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, you tell him. She says if you look into somebody's eyes for seven seconds and you stare for seven seconds, it's like seeing them naked. Yeah, seven so seconds you, of eye contact. Don't look at my eyes. So, <laughs> if you hug, so if you hug for 20 seconds and look into their eye for seven, what does that mean? That's yep. a lot. Yeah. I don't know what base that is. Pretty soon you're, you're having children. Married. Yeah. <laughs> too far. Point, it's too far, Ellie. Oh, my god. Get gosh. married there. Yeah. Do, I need, do you get a ring after that? Yeah, that's right? actually a proposal. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I have to reevaluate everything now since you guys have ripped these hugs from me. I'm a little upset. But I'm pretty sure we need rules the for hugging. Seven seconds the rules of engagement. Yeah, rules of it engagement. It is. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> oh, it got awkward. It got awkward. It can't do it. can't do it. Well, that's because you guys put too much pressure. Well, then you, this morning she sent me and Jim something about the correct way to hug. Yeah. I didn't watch the video, of course. I did. It was really funny. Was it funny? I'll have to watch it. I can't believe you didn't watch it. It was actually really funny. It's a spoof on hugs. I never watch anything you send. Of course you don't. And then oh I sent the gosh. one that's like yeah. a defensive on how to get out of hugs. That's yeah. awesome. For I like women that are in like bad situations. <laughs> and it's, it's pretty funny. So I was like, I thought it was pretty Before appropriate. you guys if I'm around, apparently. But that's awesome. that just goes to show you that your phone is listening. Because yeah. I've never looked up anything about defensive, never that anything about hugs. Up? It just showed up on my, my explore. And I don't follow anybody on Instagram. Yeah. Jim, the Russians are going to come for you. Okay, Seriously. so We're do you guys Putin. use the sleep app on your phone? No. no. Okay, What's so that? it's it's crazy. It's yep. called Sleep Cycle. Yeah. You put it on your phone. You put your phone 
down next to your bed, except in water. And <laughs> Sorry, Rich. It records your sleeping. It picks up your snoring, picks up everything. In the morning, you wake up and it has your whole sleep wave. But it's face down next to your bed. How does it know? It picks it all up. It knows too much. Yeah, it's Siri's absolutely definitely crazy. listening. I don't like artificial intelligence. That whole, like, you know, they're talking about, uh, you know, creating artificial inte- intelligence. Haven't they seen any of the Terminator movies? Right. <laughs> Skynet. <laughs> Skynet. Like, Skynet. Like, why? why? Like, yeah. who thought happen. it was a good idea? Yeah. Will Smith. That's right? No, that's I, iRobot. 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 That's another one. That is yeah. crazy. But Terminator's Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's going to happen. You- and I want to know why my parents let me watch Terminator 2 when I was like seven or eight. That was literally my favorite movie. I was Terminator for Halloween one year. Really? Well, you have a That's solid picture. Seven of that. or eight. No, I had to be younger than that. Yeah. That was my favorite movie. And I look back and I'm like, what was wow. <laughs> Granted, I let Lakeland watch Wonder Woman. So. Yeah, so Wonder Woman was cool, though. We were watching it last yeah, night. It's actually a really good movie. It's not I like a bad it. Movie yeah. at all. Yeah, but Lakeland just goes around the house now beating the crap out of everything. <laughs> And I'm like, Ugh. like she Hillary's a, like, you shouldn't have let her watch that. And I'm like, yeah, well, she, she had a sword the other day and went up there just going everything the is a sword. Hacking. Everything is a sword now. So, oh do, do you think she could have been a little more built, as far as like the lady? In, oh, you're saying it's oh, too yeah. like feminist type. She like, was almost like too smooth, right? You know, you'd think somebody a little bit more rugged. Be, but she's yeah. also on Amazon, so she's technically not a human being. Yeah, you're right. So that could be, you know, you got to look into yeah, that. Yeah, but you still got, like, you know, along the way, you got Tarzan. He's got muscles. I agree. Yeah. Right? You got but all these other guys. They all have, like, some kind of muscular cheer to them. And she was, yeah. like, kind of, like, just. No. Yeah. I don't think we are allowed to talk about that. I think Ellie can. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, what should you I've think? never Did actually you see it? seen the movie. Oh, you yeah, know, but she looks know. like That's a guy, actually... so it doesn't matter. Excuse I mean, just... me. <laughs> I'm teasing. Oh, my good guy. I, no, because your hips go in first. <laughs> Very weird. That was a one-time thing. <laughs> I was running towards you. Maybe I tripped. It's okay. You no, can hug me however you want. Aggressive. That's the word. I love now I'm e- an aggressive man hugger. Great. A little no. exuberant. You guys, you But know? it's authentic. We decided I that. I love you. I, I Still love creepy. You Look you. at me. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. Well, so tell us why you're here this week. I'm um, passing. I'm naked. If you look at yeah. your eyes for seven minutes. I'm here. You're supposed to do five for the 36 question test, which we need to do. But I know it's going to be like pulling teeth to get you guys to 30 do 30 question test. Oh, this is. So they say this is some. Sorry. I'll get back to that. Yeah, question. go ahead. 30 seconds. So it doesn't s- matter that you're here. You're not our guest. <laughs> <laughs> so they say that if you. Who's they? Um, I don't know. Does it have to do with the Internet? We'll say Mr. Perrier. Uh, had, came up with this study. Yeah, I think you know about this. Hey, have you had the strawberry Perrier? Uh-uh. It's pretty good. good. I Legit. It. I don't, that fake stuff, though. If it's, it's not like fake. infused with real strawberries, it's like real. sure. It's, it's organic. Like, anyway, sorry, the 36 questions. So this um, psychologist uh, Let's do this. decided that... <laughs> um, Let's do this. They created these... Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Blueberry sorry. juice. And I'm sure his hands are clean after working oh, out, gosh, so it's good. Yeah. That's okay, I'm drinking staff. I know, it's like... See, blueberry Perry, that's great. Anyway, so if you answer these 36 questions with <coughs> anybody, a complete stranger, it'll be someone that you have like, uh, they say it's either 36 questions to, still become, stuck on the day, but. Because <laughs> to become like best friends or to fall in love. It's that, they're that, the, well, whatever. So. I don't know about that. It's b- yeah, because I basically it's going through that. like, no, but the first question is like, uh, if you could invite anyone to dinner, who would it be? Jesus. And then every <laughs> tier. I, that's a cop out. Qu- like no, everyone it's not. would say Jesus. Not Who everyone. Who else other than Jesus? Alive or dead? Anyone other than Jesus. Well, you, that's well, not the question. Is that what they dead, said? Anyone to dinner? But uh, Jesus, I want to know some answers. <laughs> but I want to know. But yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone wants to know that. Uh, well, something else. That's my uh, answer. You can't change deeper. the questions. That's <laughs> not, dig deeper. How much that's deeper can you go? That. Come on, Ellie. No, I think Jesus is the. But to me, that's uh, like every. A lot of people would say. I that. think that changes though. Like, right now, I'm reading that book on Ronald Reagan. I'd like to talk to the guy now, yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. But I'd also like to I'd talk, talk to, to Kennedy. Churchill. Okay. That'd be cool. See that. So that's great. But I'd really like to talk to the investigators on the Kennedy assassination. Did you see that show recently? I read, the, I read the Killing Kennedy book, but there was another one they just put out, and there's other witnesses that like saw. Yeah, I don't. I don't crazy. think. I'd like to know what the the truth is about. I that. don't. I mean, if you start looking at like 
the angle of everything that happened, like I see, I only see one shooter. Mm-hmm. I just don't know why Lee Harvey Oswald did it. Like yeah. that's what I want to know. I think there has to be more than. I one. mean, he lived in Russia. <laughs> I right. don't think so. If you watch the video, like no, but the, the exit wound. Yeah, no. I mean, the if you look at the ballistics, they did know. a show on like mm-hmm. they recreated everything, yep. and it's the exit wound is almost perfect. You see the guy get wounded, wounded next to the bridge. He was all the way down at the bridge, I didn't see and there a guy was a get piece wounded. of shrapnel that hit him in the face. I didn't see that. But if you look, like. The, the crazy, like, perfect storm stuff on that, too. Like, yeah. Kennedy was wearing a back brace because he had a bad back yeah. when he got shot the first time. If he would have gotten – if if he didn't have the brace on, he would have fallen completely over, and the second shot wouldn't have hit him. But since that brace kept him up, I don't know why we're on this, but – yeah, I like, I, I like conspiracy theories. I, like I do, but stuff. I don't. I'm just kind of like, come on. Like, some stuff you got to, like, let go. You know, some of the conspiracy yeah, that's stuff. That's, like, like, legit, though. Yeah, that that's one is, like, deal. I want to know why Jack Ruby killed Lee Harvey right. Oswald, and I want to know why Lee Harvey Oswald killed Kennedy. Right. He lived in Russia for however long. He tried to defect to Cuba well, twice, I think. So, was he just mad? What, yeah. You know, what the deal was. Yeah. So, I don't know. Anyway, that was uh, from the 36 questions. The next one would be, like, What's your relationship with your mother? Anyway, you do wow. 36 questions, and at the end, you're supposed to look <coughs> into the other person's eyes for five minutes. Nice. Oh, there's the five-minute thing. See there? Yeah. I don't know, Ron. Creepy. It's, it, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> anyway, so, Ron, tell us about yourself. Why are you here? What's going on? So, um, I mean. I, What's your middle name? Samuel. Full name Ronald? Ronald Samuel Ortiz. Hello, when I was yeah. in trouble, it was Ronald. Ron. Ron. Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Ronnie, most of the time, my brothers and sisters called me Ronnie. Named after anybody? No. I'm the baby. Bro, I was like the, out of six kids, I, I, I even wondered if I, at a certain point I was adopted. There's no <laughs> pictures of me anywhere. What <laughs> number are you? Six. Oh. I'm the baby. Did your like friends, one or two pictures. Did they call you Ronnie? I mean, was that? That was my mom would call me Ronnie. My yeah. sister, um, if I got in trouble, it was Ronald. Yeah. Yep. You're Richard, Richie. Richard. Richard if I was in trouble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm Jimmy. I was James if I was, I was in trouble. Richie, James. yeah. Richie, all my family, my mom called me Richie. Yeah. yeah. And I when I was a child, hated it. <laughs> were you Eleanor when you were in trouble? Uh I didn't really get in trouble. I oh, believe that. Oh, but uh, Silver crazy spoon. enough, my uh gold spoon, thank you. Oh yeah, sorry. My brother calls me Eleanor. But that's Is that it. Him? Is that him calling out? Yeah, and he Big never bro? calls me. That's so weird. Big like bro? he never calls me. And they'll probably be like, hello, Eleanor, just oh. to spite me. Eleanor. That's <laughs> the name of the, what, the car and... Oh, yeah. Gone in, Gone 60, in 60 seconds. seconds. It was a Shelby. Shelby GT Mustang. Super fast. Yeah. So are Jim you knows still, where you, are you still fighting? You want get one if you yes. want one. Yep. Um, still going, going on 20 years now. So 20 years. Mm-hmm. Did you always want to be a firefighter? Yeah, I did, actually. I grew up near a fire station, and um, we'd go over, like, probably every day. We were always playing in the back alley where, where the trucks came in and out, and... They're all out there playing basketball or playing football. We go out there and just hang out and, you know, throw around until they get a call and it's like, oh, look how cool that is. So, you're yeah, not I a, always did. You're not an engineer, are you? No, just, fire just, drive, just, just a firefighter. Just a firefighter paramedic, yeah. Nice. So, we're all pretty much cross-trained in our right. department. About 98% are all firefighter paramedic. Yeah. You're a paramedic. That's legit. Yeah. So, yep. yeah That's we, the way it was here, too. Yeah. Uh, but everybody's EMT. You have to be an right. EMT within two years, I think. Yeah. And then paramedic. There's a lot of paramedics when I when I left. Is that there. what you did too? I wasn't a paramedic or EMT. I was just first responder because I was still in school. Okay. <clears throat> but I was a firefighter. I was in the back of the truck. Yeah. I was an EMT I, so I could IVs start IVs mm-hmm. and do all that stuff. Yeah, that's basically paramedic. We we the only difference between that and us is we can give like major drugs. And you stuff can push too. a little medication. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All firefighters. We all were. We all That's were. So still cool. is. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. long were you? You were four. Four About years. Four years. Me too. Yep. Same. I, I love it. I mean, it's a, it's an amazing job. It's a great job. Really Best job in yeah. the world. I actually, I was just showing Ron. I'm gonna, I'm applying to be, get back on the volunteer department here. So oh, cool. That's awesome. after That's awesome. I set the field yeah. on fire, I was I like, yeah, you know what? Might as well. Might as well run right down <laughs> on the bottom of the mountain and get the yeah, get the pumper. Hey, he knew what he was doing. I mean, it was like watching a firefighter. Yeah. Sometimes that stuff doesn't go away. It's it's it, it's funny because well, most of it's based on common sense once you get there. Yeah. Except for lighting things on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of natural. Yeah. Well, most firefighters are uh, arsonists anyway. Yeah. So arsonist. we had a guy almost blow his hand off. Yeah, that sounds about oh right. Oh my gosh! And fireworks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, he literally like, almost lost his digits. Wow. So. Did no, but I I love my job. It's amazing. You get to help people. Were you an um, athlete growing up as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually swam for most of my life and then went from swimming to track and field. 
in college and did that for a couple of years. And you do lifeguard stuff too? Never did. No? No. It, it's funny because I, I got since you guys were by a beach. Like if they... the, the bathing suit was creepy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm out. I didn't feel comfortable with that. Well, now they have jammers. <laughs> you don't have to wear the creepy. What they have to wear back then? Speedo Speedos. Speedos. <gasps> I yeah. thought they would wear board shorts. No. You'd be saving people Par- in Speedos? Yeah. No, yeah. no. Firefighters, we, we wear like, I'll wear, board shorts. I'll wear my friggin' sliders. Yeah. Mm. I just jump in the water sliders. But you're saying the lifeguards did back then? Uh, they had no, I had board shorts, but he was talking about swimming, swimming, like comp- oh, competitive swimming. Oh, gotcha. My 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 guns. younger son, who basically is now was a collegiate swimmer, swimmer, was mortified when we got them into swimming. He was like, he wanted nothing to do with swimming because <laughs> because yeah. of the yeah. speedos. My, and then he found out about jammers. You're like, yeah, I could do this. <laughs> my oh. aunt, um, on mine and Darren's side, there's the the 32 first cousin, 25 that are boys. There was three of them that my aunt every family get together she made her kids wear speedos oh, up until no. darren how old were they when they quit wearing speedos at least 10 oh, preston was at least God. 10 that's preston like if you're listening to this kids. preston trend that's his name when i when i got my wsi in high school uh-huh. only only non-swimmer on the swim team in the class they broke into my locker took my jammers, jammers away and left a little speedo yeah. nice of them <laughs> and then waited when i came out of the locker room on the pool deck oh yeah yeah that's funny mm-hmm. so, it, so it's, it went from the jammers my son wore to in college like a butt crack swimsuit like would literally where his butt was like this much mm-hmm. of his cracks hanging out like barely covering anything yeah i'm like what, what happened are you what are we doing what is that? yeah we create some drag there, Get right? The <laughs> <Just> a little, <laughs> a little drag. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, how did you find CrossFit? Then, did you find it while you were firefighting? Um, yes, and and this, as the story goes, um, so we had, I actually had gotten to a point where I, I, I needed to start losing weight. And I was like, I, I, I got to do something. I went to go get a. I, I tell the story a few times. But I went to go get a pair of pants from our guy, a supply guy, and it was one guy. His name was Wayne. And my pant size has been going up. My blood pressure was going up. My, you know, everything, just cholesterol was going up. And I was like, man, I got to do something. But I went to go get these pair of pants. And it was like, it was like a 36, which for me is a big pair of pants. You're a big human being. Though. But I yeah. say I wear a 34 Are you? comfortably loose. Jeez. Wow. Yeah, comfortably loose. For those who don't know Ron, he's the largest, most jacked human being. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just he large. is a modern day. How old tall radiator. are you, Ron? 6'3". And six three two yeah, but thirty. 30 yeah, two twenty five. Well, right now, completely lean about. muscle. Yeah. yeah. And what are you fifty two? Fifty two. Yeah. 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 So you got to thirty six. And I so I grabbed these pants and I turned away and I started walking down the hall and I turned back. I was like, Man, you're friggin' giving up. You're giving up, bro. You're like going, Okay, I, I succumbed to being fat. And I turn back around. And I put them on the desk, and the guys look at me like, "What is wrong with you?" I was like, "I'm not, Wayne, keep them, bro. I'm good." So, ironically, in the same these bunker pants are like your shift pants. These are regular like shift yeah. pants. So I was like, and I was like, "Thank heavens I did that," because at that point I was like, "All right, I got to start doing something." I know how to work out. I've done it since college, and I started working out and actually started to lose weight, and then found CrossFit through. It was like 2009. I watched the games, and I was like, "I could do that." I'm like older, but yeah, I could do that. And I started watching these guys, and I saw Rich and Ten. Oh, nice! And I was like, Did you "Fall off a rope?" I really, you know, <laughs> that really didn't stick with me until I got to know you. And I was like, "What the heck is wrong with this? Why couldn't he climb a rope?" <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's you know, it's it was just one of those things. I was like, I had the desire because of I think athletics and college and stuff. Going, I can still do this stuff. But then I went to the first sectionals in 10, and it's like, mm-hmm. I'm like competing against Guido mm-hmm. and all these like young guys. I'm like, there's Chase Daniels. I was like, these guys got more testosterone in like one finger that I have in my whole body. It's like, it's not fair. At that time, I was like 43, 44. And I talked to Johnny Mack. I was like, Johnny Mack, are you guys going to change it? He goes, yeah, we have a 50 age group coming up Were next you, year. Did you come to our region that year? Yeah. In Jacksonville? Yeah. Oh wow! Yep, I saw the, that was in the uh, horse arena, right? No, th- that <coughs> the year yeah. before that. That was the second year. The second year, the year before that, we were out at the police park. <clears throat> yes, I was there too because okay. Chase was there. Yeah, Chase was there. I was about to say because we were in. I was in that region my first year. Yep, we were in that port hork, yeah, horse park in Jacksonville. Yeah, school was hack, man. Those were the, like the those old the days. Cool days. Those old days. Cool, cool days. But so it's like it really there was a desire there to do it, and then in eleven they announced they're going to do forty five, forty nine. I'm like, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to do this. 
and I almost didn't do it because I was like, I almost didn't hit the sign up date and everything like that. And I did the workouts and I made it to the games, got third year, third that that year, and I was like then hooked. I I, I love it. It's like I hate to say it, but it's kind of like consumed my life because of not only that, but also my desire to 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 stay in shape and be a good example to the guys in my community as firefighters. So Absolutely. that's kind of become my passion now, is helping the fire department be more fit. Well, that's, I mean, that's an epidemic. I mean, is, if you look in the U.S., yeah. regular population, but fire too. It's yeah, like man. guys are dying heart attack. I mean, when I worked when I worked at the fire station, I got made fun of because I worked out. And you're just like, Jeez. what is wrong with you guys? Yeah. Like, you know, go on a call. Yeah. And <clears throat> not to say the guys didn't work during the day, but then at night they would just sit around. Yeah, but do nothing. Do nothing. Yeah. And, I mean, even during the day on – most days we didn't have anything really to do you know a couple training things check the truck off everybody go sit and you know i had a lieutenant that we could only watch the history channel but uh <laughs> you know so at least it was informative but yeah i have, I mean, I have a my captain is like fishing it's like and and once a year when the games the open comes i'm like oh we gotta watch this and he's like we're always watching crossfit it's like <laughs> i watch it like one once a season year. out of the year but what you're saying rich is so true because if you look at the statistics of death in the line of duty deaths, 90% of those are heart attacks. Heart attack. Wow. They're health related. They have nothing to do with these guys getting killed in a fire. Some of them are dying before they even get in. I was talking to a guy in Boston when I was up there with JD at um, Reebok 1, and he's a firefighter. And he said they had a guy not long before I was there that like was bunkering up to go into the fire and had a heart attack at the step. Jeez. Yeah. Didn't even get into the fire. So is it an epidemic? Yes. Is it something we can control? Absolutely. And yep. it's it's something as simple as not even exercising, but nutrition. Yep. And if we could somehow That's help these guys. I have a company, the nutrition company, and, and forever and a day we've tried to get more guys using it and their excuse, oh, it's kind of expensive. Well, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not. If you figure these guys go and get a Subway – or they go and go to Subway and a Coke yeah. and a Chips. By the time you walk out of there, it's $9. Subway's healthy, bro. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> you could end up in jail from it, too. So I'm just saying. <laughs> did, did you know uh, Rick Seagrest from, uh, like, Brevard? You know, he started Ryan Seacrest? Yeah. <laughs> They're related. He started something called Fire Sled Fitness, which was really cool in the Orlando area when I was lived back there. And he was like, it was cool. Like, he did, like, um, like treadmill ladders. Yeah, you and sent some pictures. He had yeah. like a he had a pike pole on like a chain that you would just like yeah, yeah pulled down. kind of like a skier. But it was a like a sled. It was like a multi tool kind well, of. Well, there was, was really that, and then you had the Kaiser sled and stuff, stuff like that. From him in there, the CPAT testing now. The, the, oh, okay. The it's a captain fitness test, test or whatever. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they use a lot of those things that he he's designed. Like the pike pike pole was to simulate pulling a ceiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there was so another cool. one they had instead of doing actually a sledgehammer on a tire like we used to do. It's a Kaiser sled, right? It was like a, a pipe with a spring, and it registered every time you hit it hard enough with a hammer downward, wow. simulating breaking in a door. So right. there's a lot of stuff that came out of what he did. And that's – I think that's super important, but the sad thing is that's only done at the beginning of their career. Mm. Right. So for most firefighters, they're oh, doing they that to get in. That. And after they're in for five years, we, we always call it the freshman fit five. After five years, these guys gain a ton of weight. Yep. Do, you, do you guys not have to do a year – your uh, we had to do a year fitness test and it was a joke. I mean, our union would never allow it. It would. Oh, really? Yeah, never you, allow it. They would be like. See, before when I was there, there was no union. I think they're now part of the union, but yeah, union is good, but it can be very bad for that very reason. They're protecting guys that they think they're protecting them, but they're making it worse. And they're making it worse. Making it worse. I mean, I, the first the guy I first went into a structure fire with was three hundred plus pounds, and we walk in or not walk in we. We try to go in, and we shouldn't have been in anyway, but we go in, and as soon as we get in, we start spraying, and all of a sudden, ceiling falls. Jeez. And this guy, it was me and three, this guy in 300 pounds, he picks me up <laughs> and tries to get both of us out the door. And I'm just like, if anything happened to him in there, yeah, like, done. we're done. We're yeah. both done. And so it's just, it's insane. My, my brother's 18 years at Aurora Fire, mm-hmm. and we have this discussion. He happens to be on a heavy rescue, and there are a lot of younger guys, so they're all pretty hard charging and working out mm-hmm. and trying to stay fit. But it, depending on the station you get at, you get around some guys that are kind of into their career, get in on the chow fund. Yeah. yeah, you're eating well. You're not moving. Yeah, it's sad. We have we have a, you know, and and my heart goes out to these guys because there's a couple guys that we have that are really like I would say morbidly obese. Mm-hmm. I'm talking 300 yeah. plus pounds, right. 
And the one guy's a driver, and he actually broke the steering knuckle on the truck. Wow. Climbing up into the truck, Jeez. pulled on the steering wheel, and broke yep. Broke it. He, I, I'm pretty sure, same guy, broke his ankle stepping out of a truck. So there's certain things that are just, you know, at, at a certain point, I think a department has to go, okay, this is a liability. We need to help him. Yeah. You're not trying to get rid of the guy. You're trying to help him because right. it's going to make his whole life better. And that's my thing is that I look at these guys and I'm like, going, you know you're not healthy. Don't try and convince me with this facade of being happy that you're a happy, chubby guy. Yeah, right. It's not true. You're not happy being that big. Yeah. So do it, they see you working out and training? Yeah. And like, do they want to jump in? Have you like encouraged? What has happened since you So I, I've been really fortunate because the station I'm at, I actually have a really great gym there. And they've the, the guy that's now in, in charge of our health and wellness, he's actually ironically switched over from health and wellness to risk management. So he got the position in risk management because of a lot of what he was doing with health and wellness directly applies to that. And he got us great equipment. We've gotten, as a matter of fact, I had to call Katie the other day. Mm-hmm. And he called me and he goes, Ro, I, I have an order in with, with Rogue. And do you know anybody I can get this through? They're, they haven't sent it back to me. I need confirmation. So I called Katie. I was like, hey. I, uh, Let me help you. Yeah, Katie's yeah. awesome. And she did immediately. <laughs> yep. So anyways, we've gotten great equipment. At, at probably, I'd like to get probably about five more, but – the, the runners we have at like six of our stations. Every station has a bike. Every station has a rower. Every station has like a fold-out rig. Um, rig. So bars and stuff. So we have the same stuff. And my goal was we sat down and I talked to Derek and he goes, what would you like to see? I said, I'd like to see it so it's the same across the board so every guy at every station could work out the same way. We right. could put out workouts we'll work and out. go – here, this is what the workout of the day is today. You can modify it, do what you need to do. Right. So since then, we were fortunate enough, we had a company called O2X come in. And O2X was hired by our department. And they're a, um, they they call it a, uh, what a um, almost like a, a military athlete type thing. Because in a sense, we're all like, you know, come from that, that background of, of training. Right. And what they do is they train you on so many cool things to do with our job. Is that that thing you went to a couple months ago? Yeah. yeah, O2X. And what they do is they go through, um, is I mean, like critical st- stress debriefing. They go through uh, sleep patterns for mm-hmm. firefighters. And all of these things are so important because along with health is also the mental health. Yep. And there's a there's a high incidence now of guys committing suicide in the fire service because of the things they see and builds up and sure. don't really? talk like about that. Massive uh, percentage. Yeah, sure. It's gone up pretty pretty scary wow. now. So I mean, along with those things, there's so I think physical fitness is going to help immediately. Oh it's yeah, like an for immediate sure. stress that helps, relief. Yeah, yeah, it helps relieve the stress. It helps then create camaraderie. Yep. Mm-hmm. Our guys, I mean, in my station. We get together every afternoon. It's pretty much we all go out at the same time, and they bust my chops because I take a little longer to get going. And, uh, <laughs> You're and, old, you know. And then I'm out there like till, till nine o'clock instead of being done at like you know they're done at like five, and I'm still out there doing my stuff. But it creates that camaraderie <clears throat> that that allows now you have things in common. So I think across the board for the fire service, it's super super healthy. And Derek has seen a really you know, st- strong, positive aspect of what's going on with these guys staying in shape. If we can cut back on the back injuries, if we can cut back on the simple things that happen, yep. you know, and it, I mean, there's always exceptions. There's always the idiots like me that are going to do things to do an extreme and hurt themselves outside of that. But for the most part, I think it's super important for us to to get that instilled in the fire department. When you, you know, I'm, I was talking to my brother the other day about this and when it comes time and your life's on the line, mm-hmm. you need that person next to you to be fit mm-hmm. and, and, you know, to have Trust your back. Yeah. And you're on air and that guy's, that guy's alarm's going off mm-hmm. and we've just got started, yeah. you know, yeah. th- that, I that mean, it's, good. it's not good. So, yeah, it's, um, so along those lines, so when I first started doing all this stuff, we were, you were asking me a little, so there was a concern that, Hey, you're doing too much. What happens if you get a call right now? And I kind of took that challenge and I was like, all right, so I'm going to do one of the nastiest workouts I could do. And I think at the time it was like, it wasn't even fan. It was something like terrible, like chipper that I did. And I literally 
check to see how long my recovery was. And it was like five minutes. I was My heart rate was back down. My blood pressure was back down. I was ready. Good to go. Cool I test. could have gone and done something else. Well, that and you're in so much better shape than most of the guys there that yep. it doesn't matter. I'd rather have you than yeah. the 300-pound guy. Even worn out. Without Even worn question. out, right. tired, no exhausted. Question. Yeah. Because most of those guys, and it's and it's sad, you watch. If, I think if we did a study, even just one fire department checked how many guys are ready to go back in after a certain amount of time. And that means you get a bottle. The bottle lasts for 20 minutes, 15 most guys. Yep. Go into the fire. Your bottle wears out. You come out. How long it takes them to recover. Yeah. And I think across the board you'd see that there's some guys that are, are taking over an hour to recover yeah. from using one bottle. And you can't pay attention to the details. You know, when you get tired and you can't pay attention to details, that's when we're going to have problems and yeah. we're going to have trouble. And yeah. you've got to have a level of fitness for that. Absolutely. For Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's a, it's an epidemic, and it's something that I think can be corrected. And there's enough younger guys coming in that have a desire to be in shape. Um, we were real fortunate, too. When we went over to Broward County, we were a small department before, and Broward County came over. And I had one of the chiefs come to me and a buddy of mine and said, hey, we want you guys to help us with their physical training. So in the morning – they had like an hour of physical training and we started doing CrossFit ish for recruits. Yeah. For new recruits. recruits. And we started really basic. It was um, just to start out. What we did is we, we said, okay, a mile run. And this is just an initial test. A mile run. We do max burpees in a minute, max sit-ups in a minute and max air squats in a minute. That was it. And then we took those numbers after they were done and we tested two times one in the middle and then one at the end to see what the progression was and all of their numbers went through the roof wow. i mean their mile times dropped minutes it was like kind of crazy so we did that for like three years and we did it without any payment my my chief was always like no 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 you need to submit you know for comp time i never submitted one bit of paperwork to get reimbursed because that's how important it was to me yeah. these are the people we're having come in if we can instill something good in them now yeah. it's going to last a lifetime <laughs> So after that chief actually, that's part of the problem with being the sheriff is there's a new group of people that comes in with every new sheriff. It's like, oh, here's my buddy. He's going to be the fire chief now. Right. Well, so um, wow. we went through that. You don't do that here. No, that's not how no, it is. Not like, for the fire department. Yeah, because we're part of the sheriff department. Uh, so every five years, he's reelected. Oh, gotcha. And when the sad thing is, is that when they do that, we had a great chief at the time. And when they come in, the new chief is always like, you know, usually a buddy or somebody to that sheriff. And it doesn't right. mean it's a bad thing. It can be. Right. Um, but I think for the most part, we've been fairly lucky. But with this new chief came in, you know, the finances go to other places. And they go, oh, we're doing this fitness thing? Nah, we can do that in-house. We're going to have these other guys. It's too expensive to do that. And I was like, okay, you guys bought the equipment. We have the equ That was the major expense. Right. So they stopped doing that program. Wow. Jeez. And, um you know, so for me, it was kind of sad. I was like, I still want to do it. So I've been able to help out in other ways. But again, it's just like, I'm, I really do think it's important. I even talked to the chief um, not too long ago about having, instilling that, that O2X program in the new guys coming in. Cause now they're aware of this can possibly affect me. And if I start to go through problems with thoughts or things like that, you know where to go. Yeah. If you're having problems sleeping and what guys don't realize, I have guys that are 20 years old taking testosterone at work wow these guys are taking testosterone because their sleep patterns are so screwed so up, up. Yeah. It, it affects them wow. and they're like oh man i feel like i'm really sluggish blah, blah, blah. well yeah, you're not getting sleep that's right. gonna probably be part of it right and their answer is they go to their doctor they do the testing the testosterone is low and i'm like no you need to lift weights yeah you start lifting heavy weights your testosterone goes up and get sleep and that's going to make a difference and it's it's kind of sad because there's so much misinformation and, and part of talking to Dr. Goddard to uh, that our friend that has been helping us out with stuff. He's just like, you know, he goes, a lot of the testing that can be done will show this stuff pretty simply. That's part of the reason I, I was excited to get this. Because oh, well, my yeah. sleeping is still messed up. Yeah. I mean, I had Mike Malloy, who's who's my nutritionist. He he knew the other night I took it off and I forgot to put it back on. He's like, "Bro, where's your watch?" I didn't right. see it. I was like, "What are you watching me?" What? <laughs> Big brother. <laughs> yeah, but um, so I've had some really bad sleep patterns where it's like thirty percent. Jeez. I'm like not getting the sleep I need, but that has to do with work. So it's amazing that your, you know, your your department has you because you're into it. And you're not paying using attention it. to it. And yeah. 
Well, at least you, they have you as a resource. There are a lot of places that don't have something it's like true. that. You know, it, but you know, the sad thing is, is that even though the resource is there, and I've like I've expressed, well, th- and that's not true because Derek, the guy that's in charge of the risk management, he's been really good. He's like, hey, Ron, he at the beginning, he was like, what do I need to do? Who do I need to contact? I give him a list of people, and they've been using that really well. But seeing the bigger picture, at one point, Chris and I were like, we're going to design a workout program for firefighters and this, that, and the other. And right. then when I went to O2, O2X class, it was like, this is it. I called That's Chris cool. like right away. I was like, bro, I'm bummed. He goes, what happened? I go, it's already been done. These guys <laughs> got, got, they got it down. What they need to do is they need to have somebody like Chris come in and do the f- exercise portion. Because they had a guy that was like, you know, the chest and buys, back and tries, and that mm-hmm. kind of workout going on where it's more comprehensive to what we do, mm-hmm. where they're pulling sleds and they're, you know, doing push-ups and doing sit-ups and the things that are important to what we do on yeah. the base. Drag a dummy, carry yeah. a ladder. Jump on the bike because we have that Don't now. Don't do any of that anymore. Pull, so. pull hose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we did, I've done some workouts. Pull Kettle hose. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Farmer carries, all that stuff. I mean, that's all stuff that's super important to what we do. Can we rewind to your journey, though, a little bit in terms no. of, like, you've done <laughs> so much as a master's athlete. You still run circles around us when we go to the track and oh, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But so you're saying like you found CrossFit in your 40s. Was mm-hmm. there like, was there a learning curve to gymnastics and things like that? I mean, there are young people coming up now that it's like, oh, they weren't a gymnast from the beginning. They weren't yeah. a weightlifter. It's harder. Like you can do all those things and more. Yeah. Just like more than most of the young people. How was that learning curve S- for you? So I was pretty fortunate because I had a brother that was a gymnast. And part of my torture your brother was a gymnast? Yeah. Oh, wow. So part of what he did with me growing up, he'd be like, if I did something wrong, guess what I was doing? Okay, you have to do an L-sit for like a minute. <laughs> like doing an L-sit on the floor. So he taught us how to do handstands and all those things. And then we were fortunate too because my dad was very athletic. Mm-hmm. And he was a coach in high school for like track and field and all these things. And he'd bring all this stuff home. He would oh, like, wow. as it wore out, we'd have like the bent high bar. <laughs> All these things, and and he, I mean, we had a javelin. That's cool. How wow. scary is that? Like seven, eight years old. Oh yeah, we threw a javelin when <laughs> you were so here awesome. last time. Yeah, yeah. You know know a couple times ago. You were, you, you were here. I was. A, I yeah, was, you were. I was Tiffany here that was weekend. Here. No, I, I know you guys learned. No, uh, Tiffany was here. I know, but I missed it. Tiffany was here. <laughs> yeah, she taught us how to do it. We I should do it, it again. We should do it again. I have no idea. I don't even remember how. to How good was Ron? No, he he beat it. He beat him. Yeah. It's such a hard angle, it's so though. It's weird. Like, I don't even, like, it's uncomfortable to hold. I c- was doing it completely wrong, but I kind of figured out how to, <laughs> yeah, to just cheat Tiffany, it. the track and field athlete? Yeah. Yes. Tiffany yeah. P. And she taught you guys how to throw a javelin. She's yeah. actually going to be here this awesome. week. Oh, she is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell her to bring her javelin. Yeah. We've got practice javelins. I think we There's still have them. one out there. Right I think on. we have them in the merchandise room. Every time I try to throw it, it back this. It goes into end. It tumbles. End over end. That's not what's supposed to happen. Get the out there or fetch it for us. The gipper. But, um, so I threw the javelin in college. Oh, cool. Oh. From So a lot of that stemmed from that. So I was, like, always very athletic and um, was fortunate enough to, like, my dad, you know, and my brother and all those influences, I think, kind of allowed me to have a little bit of it. I mean, I could do muscle-ups. Going into the gym, like, almost the first, I could do strict muscle-ups <laughs> for, like – Rough know. life. Yeah. But it was just <laughs> – but now I have to tell you, learning to kip properly and doing mm-hmm. all that has still been, like, you know – Hard. Yeah. It's very difficult. Yeah. Did you have a lifting background at all or no? Um, you know, it was gross. It was a gross, like, literally, like, the lifts that we did in college, we really had no guidance. Yeah. We were probably doing everything wrong. If I, you know, again, I sit and think of if we knew now, what we, you know, then what we knew now, yeah. I would probably not have the, a lot of the injuries I have. Some of the things that I got going on with my back and knees and stuff like that, they're just like, you know, I hurt everything at one point in time. Yeah. But nothing was severe enough to where it caused a problem. But I think some of the results of what's going on now in my body is just because of the fact that we didn't do things the right way. So have you ever had any, like, major injuries? Yeah. Um, Shoulder. (laughs) Yeah, we're both doing stem cell now with the same guy. Yep. Um, I had a a full slap tear on my right arm. I've pulled – Oh like gosh. this was a complete bicep rupture on the right uh, right side lower and the right left side lower had a complete rupture. Okay, so you've done been so yeah, the only there. one left is really this one up here. I gotta get <laughs> that. Did you have so surgery on the bicep? Here. Yeah, this one I did. So this one had a small it's like small incision there. This one here is like Dr. Friggin' Jeez. Gavorkian. Yeah. <laughs> he tore that. Sure enough. Wow. And then this one up here was like reconnected. Which one are you getting stem cell in? 
left. <laughs> yeah, the last one. The last one. Yeah. The last one. So hopefully it'll hold. I mean, it feels good, man. After yeah. you worked on it yesterday. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Before I even had officially met you, I've come to CrossFit in my late 40s, and you were always somebody <clears> that <throat> I looked up to, and oh, you know, because that's. I hope factors. you still feel it, though. I do. Even though you and know I'll, I'll never While forget. While he's standing there, he has to look up to you. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were in the barn, and I hadn't really met you, and we were doing a workout, and you walked by me, and you said to me, "Hey." Stay in your lane. <laughs> That's what you said yeah, yeah. to me. And Just be careful. Because you were hurt mm -hmm. at the time. Remember, yeah. what, what did you have going I, well, on? Well, I had tore my tricep. That's what it was. Getting started. Yes. I didn't have any gymnastics background. And I just was gripping and ripping it. And yep. And that's been really good rude. advice for me. No. Get out of my way. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. He says that you were like, hey, you're not, you're not these guys. Like, you're not as young as these guys. Stay yeah. in your lane. And it was good for me because it was encouraging. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, man, you like scale everything you need to scale. Pay attention. You're going to be fine. Yeah. But that was good, and yeah. then I met you later. But that was that was imp I say that all the time. Thanks. Stay in your lane. I say uh, it all the time. That's, that's and that important doesn't mean thing. don't go hard. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means all right. That's why I encourage these guys at work the same way. Is that you know these guys will the first couple. I have to tell you when I first started, I was relentless. These young guys would come in. And go, yeah, come on, let's do a workout with me. And they would be like one guy passed out on the bathroom floor. <laughs> yeah. He went in to go pee, and they came. I was like, what the heck? Oh, Opening the door, geez. and he's like stuck behind the door, <laughs> passed out on the floor. And we get a good laugh out of it. Now that you begin to realize, okay, you can hurt yourself. So I, I get these guys and I'm like, I design workouts for them so that they're working to their like potential. Right. Not like trying Rel to keep up. Relative with intensity. Exactly. Right. It's like, okay, we're going to do a minute of this. Well, what pace? It doesn't matter. Just get when done. you start sweating, you're doing good. But do you right. do that for yourself? Like, have you ever, like as a master's athlete, like, do you approach workouts and did you along this eight, nine, 10 years ever limit yourself i don't feel like you were yeah. someone that was like hey like mm -hmm. i don't feel That's like part you of have problem, that mentality though. so when you approach it you don't i mean you tell me how you think about it well let me tell you before i came on this trip i get a call from my coach and he knows what's kind of going on with my shoulder he goes ortiz don't get suckered into anything you're not supposed to be doing because i will get suckered into things yeah. and it's just honestly this is my thing i'm coming up into your all space i know i'm accepted here as family but I don't want to be different. I don't yeah. want the person off the court and go, oh, I got to do this or I got to do that. Even though I have coaches that are really good and they know my body and they know what I need to do and what I don't need to do. Is that Jason that calls you? I'm going to punch him. Yeah. Oh, he loves you, bro. I know, I'm just kidding. He's, I like Jay. He, he's, Jay Lydon. He's got, he's, got, he's got a crush on you. He's a man. I like Jay. <laughs> he's a good, good dude. And, and he's very good with me. And let me tell you, I've been fortunate enough. These guys are all like, they, Jay calls me. Hey, how are you feeling? Yeah. What's going on? So I've been fortunate to be surrounded with people that are really concerned for my well-being and they want me to do well. Even coming into like possibly having to get work done on my shoulder, it's just like they, they're all, I'm fortunate. I've really been blessed. God's God's kind of protected me. I feel like so, but um, I think my chair just broke. Oh, sorry. He That's protected okay. you till you broke that chair. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now I'm in trouble. I could fall down. Yeah. <laughs> but it's one of my favorite stories, Jim. Is we were um here for like his, his, you were here for something for him, John. We were all running at the track and was it the Tosh thing? <laughs> No, that was rough too, man. That's a whole other story. <laughs> that was the cramps. The cramps got me. Oh, the cramps. my God. Oh, my gosh. So and dehydrated. <laughs> so the cold. the frozen water. Oh, my gosh. And so he's putting die. us in You groups. saved me. Did you reach in and grab us? Who yeah. else said I? It was. I was on. Well, I wasn't on your team. I was on your team. No, it was uh, Lindy's. Lindy's John, John. You and John. You and John almost died. John froze up an arm length away. I grab a hold of John arm and then Rich pulls me in. You save them? Yeah. I'd save them. Well, no. Hey, listen. I was going nowhere and I had John <laughs> taking me with him. The it wasn't good. They pulled out. Out in, out in the ice, water? In the ice cold water. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I could I could feel the ground underneath me. It's not like we were deep enough. That I, would, I would have drowned in it, though. My legs weren't functioning. <laughs> it's so cramped up. Pull out a little starfish. Oh, my God. So oh it was my funny. Gosh. Sorry. Actually, yeah. No. So we, Hinshaw was putting us in all these groups based on paces to run. And Ron was in our group. And he literally, when I say he ran laps around us, ran at our pace. And we all finished. And we're like, how did you just crushed us in yeah, the workout? Like, it was awesome. It was, it was hard. And you just always hang. It's, yeah. it's amazing. I, I, it, but I, I, I like to... Um, I was just telling somebody the other day, and again, I get off on a little tangent, but it has to do with the same thing, is that there's a young young lady that came and did the open with us at Pierre's gym and another young kid. Her name's Paige, and the other kid's Zach. And um, they're like, man, the, the dad was watching us work out before, and he goes, this is really great atmosphere. And I said, 
it's not until like Pierre and I experience coming up work out with you guys that you realize there's a level of fitness that can always be a lot better than you are. And that's what's going to push you. So when I come here, I come here, number one, I love being here. You guys are like family, and I, I love the atmosphere. Pierre commented just the other day. He goes, you know, it's amazing. I come back a better person <laughs> every time he, every time he cool. leaves. Yeah. So the, you definitely have touched him and, and made a difference. His wife even said that. Really? Yeah, definitely. Pierre's so, a good dude. Yeah, it's, you have an exceptional group over there too. Yeah, that's a yeah, great a good group, group too. Yeah. We're 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 really fortunate. So I mean, it's it's really important to to pitch yourself again. It's like you know better yeah. athletes, but also to know okay what you can do. And so yeah. I'm not going to go and try and lift you know 300 and some odd pounds when there's no way I can do it. I'm going to do what I know I can do, and right. then I have to know too my recovery is going to be a little bit different from right. these guys. And that's the biggest thing with that Masters athletes. Our recovery is like astronomically different right much different yeah whatever they do the next day they're not going to be that sore and i'm going to be like beat up right and i know that yeah no question That's so different. what do you value most for longevity in this sport i feel pretty beat up every day in terms of is that sleep is it rich Everything. just got a sauna an infrared yeah. sauna i do have an infrared sauna now do you really yeah let's try I'm it out I'll, let's do it no, no i think recovery is 90 percent of it but uh, like, what do you do for? I think recovery is 100 percent of it. When I'm avoiding the situ- the, co- the that whole question, because I don't recover like I should. But what I do do, let me tell you, <laughs> Normatech. You said do do do. I did do. <laughs> well, I do do do. Normatech, I do every night. Theragun, I use every day. Every day. What does the Theragun do? Oh, it's awesome. It's like better than rolling for me. It's like. Yeah, I would rather use the Theragun than roll. I started using it a little bit more again. I like it. Mm-hmm. It's, Loosens to me, up it's everything. like a yard blower. If they could make the silent version, like whoever makes the a silent. A yard blower? The, the leaf blowers that are like. <laughs> a yard, yard blower. blower. Yeah. Yard blower. Yeah. <laughs> yard blower. A leaf blower? If once they make. <laughs> is it not called a yard no, no. blower? It, it's, not, it's not called a yard blower. No. <laughs> so you like Normatec every day? Every day. Because I do it like every other day. If no. I do it every day, it doesn't. My wife, it, it's funny. She, she's like. My wife hates it. Yeah. She's, she's like, you're putting those stupid things on again. They're amazing though. Uh, they, I like them, yeah. So she, my wife's crazy good at doing all kinds of recovery. So she does Ramwat every night. Every night, my wife. Her her schedule is, I come in, get my meal, warm it up, sit on the couch, eat, put the Normatec on, and chill. She comes home, gets into the tub, nice warm tub. Puts the salts, the, magnesium yep, salts, the magnesium salts from M12 MG12. Right MG12. Yep. Love that. Stuff. You haven't had that? No, that's good. Yeah. He called me the other day and he goes, "Hey, how long does a bag last?" And yeah, I go, "Bro, well, my wife and I are both using them, so we blow through a bag in about two days." I yeah. do. I go through it so fast. Yeah. And I you, can't you take know, baths. you realize oh, that's can't so do hard. It. That salts actually is four times as potent as your normal magnesium Absolute salt. Is oh, it? yeah. Really? So you don't need as much. You can use probably like a quarter cup. I get so upset when I get to the bottom oh, of the no. bag. I'm like, no. But you probably go like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just I have a hard time being in the tub. Oh, That's my taking gosh. the bath. I think oh, it works. Yeah, it really it. works, but it's really good. Yeah, so I do. she does that, gets out, does her Ramwad, and then she'll eat. And then do the Normatec. Hmm. So she's really, really, really good with it. She's like, every night, she's like, hey, you want to do Ramwad? I'm like, mm. Yeah, no, I really don't. I'm good. <laughs> do you just use the boots, or do you do any of the other? I predominantly use the boots because that's yeah. what's usually sold. I've done the arms, but it's really hard because you can't like snack. You can't do anything. You can't <laughs> snack while you have. Well, you like this. It's impossible to put things in your mouth. <laughs> just just have your wife feed you grapes. Yeah, right. Can you just throw some grapes at me? She'll be like, <laughs> yeah. My wife would just smash them on my head. <laughs> so that um, is probably what I do predominantly. That uh, I should do more. And I'm not good at doing that. What are you missing? You said you think that you're not as good at recovery. What would you suggest if you stretching like Ramwad? Mm. Serious, I'd be. I think that's a that or or you know doing Kelly Starrett stuff is really good to do because when I was doing that, that was probably like I would say probably like four years ago. I was a lot less prone to injury. I think that. You've been talking about yoga. I've been doing some yoga stuff. Oh, a bit, yoga. Uh, saying that that's, it's it's hard, hard, man. Granted, like I've done, a f- she had some app or something that I've used a couple, and then a couple nights a week I'll steal some of the stuff that I feel like helps. Like I can't. So ever since I had meniscus surgery, I can't sit back on my oh, heels. My, like I can't do it. The sure does like, that. I feel like my knees are going to explode. Yeah. Right. Oh. And since I've been doing the stem cell, I've done two treatments of stem cell. 
I feel like some of the inflammation is starting to leave, but man, it's still still hard to get back there. You gonna have Doc on? You gotta have him. On. Yeah, we're gonna have him on when he comes awesome. through, Doctor Goddard. Yeah, he's 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 um. So you've done a round of PRP. Yeah. And PRP around a stem cell. Brutal, bro. Yeah, oh you said God. it was terrible. The stem cell. Why I've was done, it brutal? Hurt. I've done two rounds of the stem cell, and the first one was way worse. The second one was not nearly as bad. The first one felt full of inflammation, and there was some, like, just, like, achy pain, but after about two or three days, it was all right. But the yeah. second time, it was nothing. I, like, I felt like I could have went back and oh, yeah. squatted the next day. But yeah. The second round for me, it was the same way. So I had my third round on Monday. Yeah, so. he said he's... It's, a, it's funny because the PRP, when I did that, he even told me, he said, so what we're doing, they get your blood, they draw it out, they put... Spin it. Yeah, they split it, spin it, take the, the platelets, mm-hmm. and then they add stuff into it that causes inflammation. So mm-hmm. now your body's going, okay, there's something there, I need to fix it. So it causes that heating. During that time, you're not supposed to take any aspirin, ibuprofen, anything like that. They don't want anything to take the swelling away because that's what's causing the... The healing. But if you can imagine having something swollen and painful, it was like four days. I was like, I was at Wadapalooza one day around. I was like sitting up in the stands going, oh my God. I yeah, you said it was this. terrible. It was, I was well. sweating. Oh. It was so bad. So, and it was funny. He's, he called me the next day and he's really. Super good, dude. He calls me up. He goes, how you feeling? I go, <laughs> just for, I feel like shit. <laughs> 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 he goes, is that bad? And I go, doc, Aww. it's that bad. He goes, it'll pass. It'll be okay. And then it's kind of like a flu, a little bit I've heard, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, some it's achy, really rough, yep. yeah. Fever. Yep. And then he did uh, two weeks later. He did. That's when we started the stem because he wanted that to kind of like, almost like cause additional like not damage but like healing some, a little yeah, bit, healing going on. And mm-hmm. then he put the stem cell in. It said, for the most part, he sign, finds best results right after surgery. So you have the surgery done, you do the stem cell, and it's like immediate, like because you're still healing, mm-hmm. right? So. Yeah, with mine, <clears throat> I planned on doing it before the open. I was going to do before the open, post open, and then like a couple in between regionals. Yeah. And he decided it'd be best to front load the two. So we yeah. did, I think it was like two weeks before the open, I did back to back. And so basically, I couldn't squat for two or three weeks yeah. leading up to the open. Yep. And then it's been a month since my last one, and I'm doing one more next week and it, it seems to help like i was taking meloxicam every day for almost a year now God. i haven't done that in about a month there's less inflammation granted i'm taking a lot of turmeric curcumin yeah um some yep. other stuff some deer antler yep. um but it seems to be getting better it's getting better than it was without oh absolutely. Stuff for sure i'm telling you right now i, I think it's definitely because i think we talked about this too is that you know, he had called me, he goes, how do you feel? And I go, I feel pretty good. I probably feel like maybe 85% and the 15% was just, was muscle endurance. It's mm-hmm. because I hadn't used it for, Yeah. I mean, honestly, I hadn't lifted anything heavy or done any heavy lifting period for like four, 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 he wanted like 20, wow. 20, 30 days. All right. So coming into the open, I was a little concerned because I mean, my weight, my numbers are down. I just hadn't done any heavy lifting. So when that heavy lift came up, I was like, all right, we'll see how it goes. So the first one went well, and the second one is just I got ugly on my lift. And But I think it's definitely better, definitely better. It's like a notable difference, like less pain on certain movements wow. that I had, like excruciating pain before. How many injections can you get? Stem cell. You yeah. can do, I think, as many really as you want. Oh, They're you doing IV now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's like any – yeah, they, uh, they do infusions, like literally bo- body infusions for people that have certain kinds of diseases. And so is this something is that, that you'll add to like your regimen? Is that something that's possible or is that just this so is like a one-time thing? So you got to be kind of kinda be careful because I looked it up. As, yeah. as long as you're doing stem cell to repair mm-hmm. something like a joint to get it back to normal competition level, you're fine. But as soon as you start doing some of like the IVs and stuff like that, then you can – that's yeah. illegal or banned. Absolutely. So yeah. to tell you, I haven't, I had before this clean in uh, 18 to a or B, whatever the heck it was. Yeah. I hadn't cleaned over 275 really since surgery in August. So wow. yeah, Hit. <laughs> uh, 343, that's something amazing. like that. That's ridiculous. So like, that's incredible. Feels better. Yeah. But we got to work back feel? up. It felt fine. Honestly, I just felt sloppy and not like my legs weren't there. Yeah, like yeah. I tried to hit 263 and one, I probably took too big of a jump. Um, but 
I mean, I think we all did that. On but that. like you said, I mean, I literally, I just feel like my nervous system doesn't feel like it's not used to the heavy weight. That's what I was worried about. Yep. It was, it felt all right. Yeah. I mean, I, I've squatted and stuff like that, and that's, I think that's some of the stuff that was okay. My legs were were pretty good. It's just like everything else, I couldn't hold it up. Yeah. So I know that's upper body strength, and I just got to get that back. So I know it'll come. It's already there. It's just, you know, kind of muscle memory and getting it back in shape. So Mine's the same way, though. It's like about 85%. Mine is, is swelling and inflammation. If I could get rid of the swelling and inflammation, yeah. then I would be 100%. Be Luron, Do what? Luron. 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 That's yeah, a, that's what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's I I notice a big difference with with that as I take like you know certain things, I notice little things that don't happen that do, and it's funny because my wife the other day I was taking my pills and in the morning it's like you know it can get kind of crazy it's like first <laughs> breakfast. You know? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. You're like holy. Man. I take like 15 <laughs> different like <laughs> fish oil, oh, all gosh. this other stuff. Like I'm just like oh man. I'm like and I she goes do you know do you notice a lot of difference with that? I go you know. I'm just afraid to come off. Of yeah. <laughs> right. Because so yeah. one of going them's on. working. You don't yeah. want to abandon it. <laughs> yeah. So. That's, That's the way taking... I was with the meloxicam, though. I was like, I don't want to come off of it because, like, I don't know what my knee is going to do. And then he was like, you have to. And I was like. Oh, Side effects on that are terrible, bro. Yeah. I started looking up, like, heart failure and stuff like that. I was like, oh, all right, gosh. we should probably stop yeah. that. Especially the line <laughs> of work I am in. <laughs> Maybe not good. Maybe not a good thing. Yeah. So, so there's, a, I mean, I'm, I'm like a big stickler with, like, medications, period. Like, I just, just took some um ibuprofen and i haven't taken ibuprofen i guess today for like two years yeah i do not take ibuprofen it's just not good for your system it causes like all kinds of problems with your kidneys and Jeez. liver and yeah it's not good what were you gonna say i started taking a product called alpha brain and okay that's like, supposed to help for memory and yeah, stuff just like memory that. and stuff that's and like then, old people stuff then you don't have to worry about this yet I just started taking one. You well, take it with your Metamucil? Yeah. <laughs> right with it. You start right in. Yeah. The fiber. Absolutely. But when I don't have it, I run out. I freak out. You know, That's like, why I'm with melatonin. I'm stupid yeah. today, man. I gotta have Although it. I'm trying to wean myself off, I'm down to three milligrams instead of five. Look at you. Yeah. You, know, you know your body will stop producing it if you take it. It's like with anything, though. If you put something into your body, your body's going to go, I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. You can't. You can't make old guy jokes to me. No, you're <laughs> older. That's, that was the comedy part of it. It's like <laughs> I didn't even get that. <laughs> I didn't, take your, alpha, <laughs> didn't take your alpha brain this morning. Did you? Sitting here. <laughs> I started taking something. It's actually called something IQ. And we, my my wife and I saw it. We're sitting there. We just getting bad. Infomercials. Oh my you god. Eat your TV, you eat and your TV like, dinners in front of the TV. Or in the Norman Tech right into it, man. It was like I looked at my wife. Like, you got your trays. <laughs> you got your trays with the like in front of the couch. The little the little cup with all your medications yep. in it. Uh, applesauce next. <laughs> uh, you got your little flip lid, has your numbers, the days. <laughs> the days. Oh, that's awesome. So I looked at her and I go, we should try that. She's like, yeah, we'll try it. And then it's like she has problems, problems sleeping. So so ironically, we went to uh, – at Wadapalooza, there was a company there with medical marijuana stuff. And they have the hemp stuff. Right. Without the CBD in it. Yep. So it has all the other so – the THC, but – is it? The, no, it has the other CBD, way? but no THC. Yeah, correct. Right. Yeah. So I mentioned the guy goes, you know, my wife really has a tough time sleeping. He goes, I got something for you. And he brings out these two little syringes. They're like one cc syringes. <laughs> and he's like, okay, so each one of these has like six doses. I was like, oh, okay, good. So I take them home. I give them to my wife. And not thinking, <laughs> you I didn't tell, tell her. her. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no. wow. She wakes up like is it 2 o'clock. Like an in injection? Afternoon. No, no. This no, is, is just like mouth right in your mouth. <laughs> and I was like, how was that? She goes, oh, my God. Slept so good. I was like, really? She goes, yeah. And she goes, but the thing is, I don't think, you know, one dose like that. And I go, oh, no. God, you took the whole thing. She goes, yeah. And I was like, that was like six doses. But now this is the difference. Think about somebody oh taking gosh. something from for sleep and they t- take too many pills. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's going to kill them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This just totally chilled her out. She was asleep for like a half a day. Right. <laughs> Pulled She's a Rip Van Winkle on me. You know? Where can I get some of that for somebody else I know? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it, but the thing is, so it's, it, it doesn't come up in testing. It's right. not going to hurt them. But then I sit and think, especially in, in my career as a firefighter, this whole thing that's happened with the opioids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really oh. not yeah. good. This is like a sad thing. And we have the ability now to help these people with something that's natural. Yep. Granted, it's maybe a little outside the box, but I would rather see these people on that 
then opioids that are going to kill them. No question. And plugging them up, and they have problems pooping, and it's just like it's a ridiculous a list of things that happens from meds. That's why yeah. we, the meloxicam is as benign as it, we think it can be. It's still bad because it's it's not normal yeah. for your body. It definitely Sorry. needs to be more part of the discussion for sure. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That's why. Well, it's like, like the stem cell stuff. It's not FDA or anything like that. So you're like, you know, no, we'd rather pump them full of meds or surgeries that are kind of. Yep. You could say maybe not as dire as people think they are, and I don't know. That's what Doc was saying when I first met him. He's like, "Hey, listen." He goes, "You know what? I've I've stopped cutting on people." I would rather have yeah. at least tried stem cell on my meniscus Absolutely. before I had yeah. surgery because it feels worse. Yeah. Felt worse after surgery. Oh yeah. Than it did before surgery. Oh yeah. I, I, there's a couple of guys that worked that were kind of. There's a guy every time I walk in, he's like, "Hey, how's that arm doing?" Mm-hmm. And you know, it for the most part, it's just like I can give him a good report on what's going on with it, rather than them being out of work for like four months mm-hmm. right. because of surgery. So it's it's definitely. I mean, I think it's. But I think it also goes back to part of the problem is the reason that happened was probably because some imbalance anyway. So you also need a good PT that kind of knows what's going on, some corrective exercises, someone that can assess you and tell you, hey, the reason this happened is probably because you know on my knee, it's you know my ankles and my hips were probably jacked up, and you know trying to get all that sorted out. You ever listen to Julie's Fichet's podcast? So, Did you just listen to one of Sam Briggs? Uh-uh. She she has a movement coach, literally a strictly a coach that does movement and goes over proper movement cycles and watches her and goes, okay, you're a little off here. That's probably why you're hurting here. Your hips not good. This is there'll be an off off camera discussion about that. Okay, really? Yeah, right, I'm in. But I think that's becoming more prevalent, too, because, I mean, we um, did a podcast with Dr. Sean, mm-hmm. and, I mean, now we have added Active so Life yeah, Rx. Yeah. 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 We've added so many since before and after mm-hmm. your knee stuff, this accessory stuff, and I swear I'm a hundred times better in lifting and things like that when I haven't been doing it for a long time. Just from these small accessory things, feel yeah. better moving in general. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still move like crud a little bit, but it's I need helping. To get his number. I was working with them, and something happened, and there was like a little separation there or something, and I stopped getting all my stuff. Okay. But yeah, I got his number. I'll give it to you. But yeah, I think in general, it, more people making are Making sure it. all the muscles are firing. I, yes. Shoot. When I tore my meniscus four years ago, just barely, I would have loved to have had some stem cell right. stuff, you know, because after having the surgery and having all that cut out, I feel way worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not better, actually. No. Mm-mm. Mine's worse. It gets, you have to figure it gets arthritic. You yeah. Know? That's the big thing. Like, he was looking at my shoulder and he goes, well, he goes, it's an old shoulder. <laughs> so, guys, it's, things aren't nice and round and pretty in there like they used to be. He goes, but what you do. And that's what people have to understand, too. So what we do, we're more prone to injury. Well, yeah, I mean, but you're also you're doing it. it. but. As a sport, not as CrossFit for life. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah. Right. I try to tell the guys at work or the people that the people ask me all the time. You know, they, they, you know, how, how long do you think it lasts? I go, listen, till the till the tires fall off. <laughs> right. yeah. I'll go, I'll go until yeah. like you know something doesn't work anymore. But I'm also doing it like a NASCAR driver drives their car. Their daily driver, they don't drive like that. But their NASCAR, they drive like that. Mm-hmm. And I said, I never recommend it to anybody, mm-hmm. yeah. unless you really want to be there. You know, the Rich Ronings, the Jason Kleepas, all these people that we know that are just crazy good athletes. The Matt Frazier, I best say that. He's, he's out there. But, and the Ellie's. <laughs> but if you're doing a dra- daily driver and you want to keep that daily driver healthy, you know, you're going to take care of it. You're going to change it. Or you're going to do what you need to do. You have to approach it like that. You cannot expect everybody to get in, in your lane yeah. and drive like you do. So I've heard some podcasts lately and – it's important coming from guys like you th- that people out there don't understand CrossFit. Mm-hmm. It, the competitive piece and then the everyday piece mm-hmm. and the difference between those oh, two yeah. things. And those are two very different things. Huge. We have a life class out here with, with folks that are in their 60s and 70s oh, out right here. And they're the CrossFitting. I'll be there next, week, next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll save you a spot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great for them. Love and, it. And, you know, it's scaled. And um, I heard a podcast, a big one, the other day, where they're talking about how bad CrossFit is. And no. I don't know, if, if, if you're a elite athlete and you're competing, well, it's you're it's definitely riskier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you're doing it as a as an athlete, like like if you're running out on the football field. Any or sport, yeah. Any any sport. I think the biggest thing is scaling people. And you know, we, there's always the same outside of people's right. Leave your you know leave your your ego at the door. Ego at the door because of the fact that you're going to have 
older guys like us walking in and you have an Ali or a Lindy sure. who's doing something well beyond probably what we can do and you're going, well, I want to keep up. Yeah. Therein lies the problem. They have to know that they cannot do that. Yeah. You have to start somewhere. And yeah. we all started there. I mean, Rich started somewhere. Yeah. He could barely yeah. climb a rope at one point. So, <laughs> <laughs> No, but everybody Real starts funny. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> We have to realize is that, you know, you, there's certain things you're not going to be able to do yeah. and you approach that slowly. And that's where Jim's, I was just listening to a, a, a great podcast with again, Coach Glassman and Julie, and they were talking about the fact that there are gyms that people will recommend people go to because they take care of their people so well. Yeah. And I see that here at Mayhem. I see it at certain gyms where I would feel really comfortable telling my mom, hey, come in here. We want you to right. do this. Right. But there's some gyms that you know darn well. They shouldn't. No. It's going to be a fire breather gym where these guys just go, you know, all out and you're going to get hurt. Yeah. So well, that's everybody kind of sees mayhem and that's what they think, yeah. you know. It's not true. At I mean, first is what I'm yeah, saying, yeah, you know, absolutely. like until they come in and actually watch and see. I went two or three times to a gym in Colorado prior to moving here. Mm-hmm. And it was literally you walk into that atmosphere and the guy's looking at you like, pick that up and let's go. Yeah. And, and I'm and, Rip it and rip it, and I knew I was going to get hurt. Yeah. And then coming here, well, man, I'm coming to the gym where mm-hmm. probably the greatest crossfitter in the history of the planet is, and that's not what I got here. Hey, you yeah. slow down. Yep. We're going to work on all these things with this PVC pipe yep. right here. Your shoulder mobility won't allow you to do any of that. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's uh, that. I think that's super important. Yeah. So it, what consistently makes you like you're one of the best master, if not always the best yeah. masters athlete. Year in and year out, what separates you? What makes you consistently on the top each year as a master's athlete? Um, I don't know. You know, I, I guess at a certain point, there's there's definitely a fact of like what you're willing to put yourself through, the workload that you have to do to to be there. Again, having a great group of people surrounding you, watching you, making sure you're you're healthy. Having been fortunate because the way the sports change, we have sponsors now that are like, I have people that provide food for me. I have people that provide nutrition for me in the form of like supplements as far as like proteins and those type of things. Those are all really important. That's all goes into that whole corral of things. And then what you're willing to put yourself through physically because it's not comfortable. And that every one of us knows you go into a workout and it's like, oh, here it goes. Or you go into, <laughs> you, you, all you have to yeah, do is look like, at Chris's uh. workout and you go, Oh, doesn't geez. look that bad. <laughs> right. That <laughs> That's was what today. You always say. Yeah. It was today. It oh is, my gosh, right? Yeah. He it's he he told me straight out in the beginning, he goes, I'll never lie to you. But he didn't say he would never trick us. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, it's like some of those workouts you get into and you're going, you know, twenty minutes in, you're going, What on earth did I get myself into? Mm-hmm. But then it's that point where you can quit, but are you gonna? And in the back of my head, it's always what is that other person doing? And it's mm-hmm. bad, but that's that driving force for those people that are that are like that. Mm-hmm. So, and I, again, I heard Josh Bridges one time talking about as far as pain goes and what you can go through. And he goes, you know, you're already hurt. You're already hurting. It's not going to hurt any more than it is right now. So just keep going and finish it up. And that's, a, I try to approach it like that every time. And there's those things that pop into your brain constantly to get you to go past that point. So that I think is part of it. And then, I, I mean, I just, I love doing this. I love being that person that's going to inspire other people to, to be better. And if I continue to do that and I can do that, like I said, until the wheels fall off, I'm, I'm going to try to. And I'll try like to answer questions I can. You look like you're having fun. I love own. it. I do. I, I, I love it. And my, my wife is honestly, she's kind of succumbed to the fact that I, I just love doing this. You know, my trips when I go places and and being able to do other things. I want to start to bring her, but she has to be able to pull away from, you know, her training and stuff too to do it. But I, I, I love doing this. I love being around you all. I love being, you know, the family that, that this has allowed me to have outside of my, my family that, you know, is my direct family. It's, it's amazing. I've been really blessed. We love having you, Ron. Thanks, buddy. Where we at? What time are we at, Dre? All right. Oh, right there. Good job, Ron. Good work. I filled that pretty quick. That was easy. You guys are easy to talk to. Thanks for coming. Give me a hug. Give me a weird, uh, weird hug, Ellie. Weird hug. I got to practice. Uh, he just I'm left you hanging. Just he did. And then he palmed my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Made your hand like just look small, like a you know, like golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, episode 
21. CrossFitMayhem.com, Froningandfriends.com.